Welcome to Personal Book Builder for Logos 4. Just to be aware of some of the other webinar tracks, if this is your first time with webinars with uh, LearnLogos.com, we have a Studying the Bible track. We're in track number 10, and that's held the third Monday of every month. Uh, approximately 9 to 10 o'clock we run those. Then we have the second webinar track, Preparing Sermons. Again, we're in the 10th session. Uh, this month is on illustrations, and that's held the fourth Monday of every month. And then we have an inductive Bible study. If you're a Precept fan, this is really geared for you. And that is held the first Monday of every month. You can sign up for all these webinars at learnlogos.com forward slash webinar. And also have a newsletter. I've been a little bit behind because uh, we've had some amazing webinars this last month. The uh, doctrinal differences with Catholics and Protestants. And now we're doing this one. So there's a bonus issue coming up real soon. The newsletter is average about 25 pages. It's really more than a manual. Great detail. Not only how to use Logos, but great tips for teaching, studying the Bible, and recommending resources, etc. You can do that by emailing at tips at learnlogos.com, and when you sign up, you'll immediately get a download link to the last issue automatically, so check that out. Also, for many of you, uh, you may not realize, but we're recording this webinar, and uh, it'll be available within 24 hours for download. Uh, normally retails for $9.99, but because you're accessing through here, uh, we lower that to $4.99, so really a phenomenal deal for training. Now the webinars are a different format. It's a little more free flow. Uh, we don't literally stop at every place to, to know exactly where to click, though you'll see me do everything and I'll explain everything. So it's uh, really good to get the training CDs. They're an excellent complement, great value. Uh, between the two, the bundle there, the orange and blue, that's almost 10 hours of training. Uh, they come in an interactive and non-interactive format. The interactive simulates you using Logos, so you'll actually click to make the video proceed in different spots and things like that. The orange disc overviews every single feature of Logos 4 and then the blue disc best practices shows you how to apply those while you're studying a Bible passage, the Great Commission. I'm nearing the update. It's almost done. There's 60 new videos. Uh, we're looking close to three hours of new content that's coming. Very excited uh, about this. And that's free to everyone who uh, buys the training CDs. All right, I'm seeing a couple questions come in. Uh, let's see, how can we set up a template Microsoft Word to build books? And uh, Robert, I'm going to show you how to do that and so much more. So let's look at the uh, topics covered today. First, number one, I'm going to overview every feature of this amazing tool. Then second is I'm going to show you how to properly set up a Word document to create the best personal book possible. And then thirdly, we're going to learn how to use the new personal book syntax to enhance your personal books. And then we'll take questions and answers at the end. But keep in mind, we'll be taking uh, questions and answers throughout the webinar. So you don't need to wait for me to prompt you to ask a question. Just post it as uh, John here just did. He says, uh, for example, if I'm trying to build a commentary on the entire Bible, and there's 1,189 chapters and 31,173 verses in the Bible, what is the easiest way to tag verse milestones in all of the Bible? Excellent question, John, and we'll address that when we get to that point. So uh, let's get started uh, right away and walk you through just the basics of how to create a personal book in Personal Book Builder. So I'm going to jump over to Logos 4 right now. Let me switch there for you. There we go. Perfect. You guys should be able to see that. And the tool is located in Tools Personal Books. So we want to go to Tools Personal Books. And as you can see right now, I have several books that I've already created, and we're going to work through each of these. So the first is the two basic menu choices in personal books. You have Add a Book and the How To. If you click on the How To, it'll give you access to the Help File. Now just as a side note, any time a book opens up at the right like this, you'll notice that you cannot change the size of it. And so I've just kind of trained myself over time to just left click on that tab, drag it over in the free space, and now you will have the ability to change the size of the help file or any other window that opens up at the right or left. That's just a little uh, helpful tool. Now the help file is very wonderful but very basic. It'll give you all the basic information you need. So I want to make you aware of that. Now let's go through the basic process of adding a book. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm going to click on Add Book, and I'm going to expand the window so we can kind of see all the information. 
Now, the, the basic information that Logos need is pretty minimum, which makes uh, creating a book quite easy if you already got the content. Uh, over at the left, we have the image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the word change. And when I click on the word change, I'm going to get access to a window. Let me bring that over here. And you should be able to see that in a second. Uh, I'll get access to my, li my uh, Windows browser. And what I'm going to do is just look for an image. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this one that's already there. And I'm going to just click on this one right there. Uh, you can use PNGs and J JPEGs. Uh, and that should be just fine for you. You'll notice that you have a variety of sizes. I would try to use the standard sizes that Logos has. Uh, but you do have some flexibility there. So it's pretty simple. You just click on change and navigate to your JPEG file and away you go. Now the next thing we need to do is give it a title. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to close this down just for simplicity's sake and I'm going to edit my current one. So uh, that way we can see all the data kind of filled in. So there's my image. Again I got that by clicking change and so forth. Alright now notice the first item in the list is title. Then the second one is going to be author. And the thing to point out here with authors is this: you want to stick with the conventions or the standards that Logos has. So it's very important to be aware of what those standards are. Now certainly you can open up a book and look at it and look at the author information and see how they did it. Now Logos does typically last name, comma, first name. And then if it's multiple authors, you want to separate those with a, a semicolon. So notice the semicolon comes right after the author, then a space, and then the new author name. So multiple authors are possible in the author section. The third section is the copyright. Please notice the copyright symbol that I have placed here. Let me open up Microsoft Word. And you will see right here, I'll just highlight it real quickly for you. Uh, I have copyright with the C. Now in Word, if you simply hit a left parenthesis, then the letter C and a right parenthesis, it immediately turns it into the copyright symbol. You can also locate it uh, through the insert menu at the top, and you click on symbol, and if you click more symbols, you'll have access to all these. And it's just a matter of, there it is, clicking on special characters, and locating the symbol for C or trademark, etc. Okay, so I like I like having that little fancy symbol in there. So what I've done is I've typed out my whole copyright. Notice the format that Logos typically uses. It's the word copyright, then the C, then by, and then the person. And what I do after I've done that is I control C to copy, and then I go right back to Logos, and I paste it right in there. So that's that makes it a little more fun when you can get that nice little copyright symbol in there. Now the next section under there is the type. This is quite significant, so I'm going to click on the drop-down box that's right there. You can click on the word that's there or the little black triangle. And if you look through there, you'll st I'm going to scroll up to the very top. You're going to see every single type of book listed in the Logos system. This is very powerful and very important that you choose selectively. Okay, so for example, here we have the ancient manuscript, the apparatus, the Bible, commentaries, we go down a little bit further, devotionals. So you want to think through and choose this carefully. And this will come in handy, as we're going to see in a little bit, for finding your books and organizing your books. You even have magazine and so forth. Uh, so be aware of those options. Now in this particular case, I'm going to choose monograph. If you're, never, if you're not sure on what type of book to choose, default by going to the monograph. That's just a standard book in Logos. Now most of you are going to choose English for the language, but just to be aware of that, you do have the option to create these various languages okay so if one of you are bilingual and you want to create these books in their language uh, that is, this is a phenomenal way to do it okay and take advantage of that now we have the abbreviated title war in heaven we have the alternate title I put in here angels the future yet to be and then we have series title which is really important so if you're going to be creating a series of commentaries or if you're going to be creating just any kind of series you want to keep the series titles name together so when you go to my library you can type in the series title and all the books will come up make sure you do your spelling correctly <laughs> very important then we have the uh, last section the publisher and publication date 
uh, notice that we have here and then at the publisher name I just put in my company and then over at the right we have the date field you want to make sure uh, you're consistent if you're just going to do years then do years if you're going to do month and year if you're going to do month date and year just keep it consistent then we go to the last section which is the add field section now I've just clicked on that and you'll see that I have some additional options I have the abbreviated title subject heading and alternate title that's where these came from the abbreviated title the alternate title uh, those came from clicking on the add field so just be aware of that option then over to the right we have the description and this is where you can type in that basic information then down below in section 2 we have the body files now it's very important to remember that Logos will let you add one or more files so in this particular case I just have one and the personal book builder is designed to work with only Microsoft Word doc files so just be aware of that okay and to add a file you simply click add file and then you navigate to your books I'm just gonna add another file here and so there you go we got two books in there now if you ever want to make a change all you have to do is right click on any of those body files and a menu will appear that will allow you to delete so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now alright great I see a question here what do you do with a book this is from John what do you do with the book that has mostly English text but also Greek words excellent question John we will get that answered once we start getting into actually the text and book building so table that for a little bit longer but it's coming soon once you've added the file then we come to the third one which is create the Logos resource file and this is where you simply hit the build book button and Logos will create a book so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now Bill asks, is the doc same as doc X uh, it is slightly different doc is the older format of Microsoft Word and doc X is the newer update which I believe is 20, 2007 or later after we click the build button Logos immediately builds the book and then opens it for you to view now this book is not on angels but actually is a, a file that we're gonna work with to show you how Logos interprets various pieces of information to create a book and then we're gonna actually work through specific templates as well so the book is opened up uh, right there in your workspace so you can view immediately the success of the book and how detailed it is and all the things now what I want to do quickly is take you back to the PowerPoint and show you the relationship between the data you're typing in and what actually is happening in Logos because it can get really confusing with the detail so what you have here on, on the screen at the left is the personal book window and then over at the right is the resource and that little pop-up that you see there is when you float your mouse over the tab so let me walk you through how this data this metadata is related and where it's going to show up so for example let's take the title you can see the blue arrow uh, the title is going to show up when you float your mouse over the book tab so let me go back to Logos and let the screen refresh I'm gonna float my mouse over the tab and there you go notice the the title angels and then you got that single line and then Warren heaven notice the book tab also says Warren heaven doesn't say angels very important to see that the war in heaven is the abbreviated title and we'll get there in a minute so let's go to the next one here's the author's names and you can see those are listed right there in the book information pop-up window